Before we start, here are the video sections. The following is a test between Marillus Action, DX Tori, OBS Studio, and Shadowplay. The following will be shown and tested. Performance impact, recording file size, video quality, and features, and also ease of access. At most points, the softwares will be shown from worst to best. Let's start off with performance impact. All of the softwares are recording in 60fps at 1080p and on the same settings in-game. DxDory didn't do so good. It was having constant FPS drops and it was having some stuttering. This leads me to the conclusion that DxDory has the worst performance out of the bunch. It has codecs like Lagarith that make file size smaller but these make my performance even worse and make it almost unplayable. Keep in mind my PC is slightly low spec. Action is a little better performance wise, however it still has a bit of stuttering, which in CSGO is not a good thing. This leads me to the conclusion that action is much better performance wise, however the stuttering is still somewhat present, which would annoy me if I was recording competitive or something similar. Shadowplay records at an almost flawless 60fps with only slight stuttering, usually when explosions happen. This leads me to the conclusion that Shadowplay is very smooth even at the max bitrate and 1080p, with only tiny amounts of stutter when a lot is on screen or an explosion happens right in front of me. OBS Studio, which ran really really well, perfectly in fact. That basically means that OBS is the best out of the four for performance. Perfect score. Now for quality. No videos in this part, just a summary on my opinion on the quality of recording of each software. DxTory. Pretty much every codec provides flawless quality unless running at a lower recording resolution. Action. Again, unless you set it to record at a lower resolution or quality, you'll get flawless quality almost all of the time. Shadowplay. The quality is good, smooth, and the max bitrate produces flawless results. No grainy look, but the video is slightly washed out, it's too bright, and there's no setting to alter to fix this. OBS again outshines the others. With the slightly low output settings that I have, 12,000 bitrate instead of 16 which is referended, and 1080p, it's perfect with no stuttering and no brightness or anything issues. Now for sizes. DxDroy came in at a whopping 7.5 gigabytes, which is terrible. Action came in at 1.5 gigabytes per minute, which is a bit more reasonable. Shadowplay came in at 400 megabytes per minute, which is very reasonable. And OBS came in at 80 megabytes per minute, which is smaller than most of my videos are to upload. Again, OBS wins easily, with Shadowplay in a close second. DxDroy is the real disappointment, with terrible performance and now even bad file size and a large performance hit when trying to use a codec for a smaller file size. Finally, let's talk about the features of each one and the ease of access on each program. Shadowplay's features are pretty light. There's not really much that you can change. The things you can change include the mode of recording, including a shadow feature, which records as you play and then you can press a key to record that last 10 minutes. It has a streaming mode, and then it has recording quality options. These include resolution, bitrate, and frame rate. This is acceptable, but is very, very light on features. You can also record your mic in game, however, this records to the same track, meaning you have to balance your mic and game perfectly, because you can't change it in post production. It also allows you to capture your entire desktop so that you can capture windowed programs. And then it has an overlay for FPS, status indicator, and camera. The shortcut options are quite good. And finally, you can change where things record to. Shadowplay is very easy to use. However, its features leave something to be desired. And the fact that the microphone and game sound don't split into two tracks make audio balancing a nightmare. All in all, it's easy to use, but not effective for experienced users who are used to something like DxStory or OBS. Action has a lot more features than Shadowplay. To start off with, it has its own video player. It's not very good, but at least it's there. Here are the basic settings. You can pick your format, resolution, video frame rate, duration, time shift, whether to record system sounds or microphone, and even multi-channel. Recording comes in one of three types, full screen or game recording, 
entire screen recording, or capture part of the screen recording. It has its own streaming service. You can even play remotely. There are some audio settings, benchmarking options, a screenshot system, pretty good hotkeys, encoding options, and export folder option, an overlay with some options, pretty good audio options, however I find this balancing system kind of strange. It also lets you put a webcam over your gameplay. These video options are quite good, however changing them can really make file size larger or smaller and effect quality, so I just left them at default. And then there's some basic program options. Action has a lot of good features and can also be easily used by an inexperienced user as long as they avoid changing anything like the encoding or quality options, which could mess up their footage. All in all, pretty good list of features and good ease of use. DX Story has a lot of features. To start off with, it has four tabs at the bottom. Raw Cap Converter, that's if you're using Raw Cap recording. AVI Fix, which I've never used. AVI Mux, which I've never used. And Video Settings, which is for streaming to a webcam or into a stream. Very advanced overlay settings. It lets you record to one place or to multiple places and lets you benchmark each drive. Some good shortcut settings. And now for movie settings. You can select your codec, frame rate, file output or direct show output. Direct show output is for streaming to a stream or into a webcam. You can pick AVI or raw cap. A few more options, clipping settings, margin settings. And then you can pick scaling or even downscale to a certain resolution. For audio settings, it lets you select multiple devices and set them to different tracks. It even lets you select the output format and quality. There is a screenshot system, very advanced settings for CPU and encoding, and then a few other settings. It also lets you make different profiles. DX Story might seem a bit advanced for new users, however after watching a tutorial or two, most people would find it quite easy to use. And its features are extremely good for advanced users and new users alike. I particularly like the audio and file location settings. OBS has the most features. You can create profiles with different render settings. You can create scenes with different recording settings, such as window capture, full screen capture, etc. You can edit mic tracks and volume. You can put effects and filters inside of the recording software, as well as stack different videos scaled to different sizes onto the top of the scene. And then there's the settings. To start with, there's some simple system settings. You can stream very easily with OBS. It's the best way to stream out of any of these recording softwares. You can output to a stream. You can record with advanced settings like these. And you can pick your format, path, and then bitrate and other things. And then there's some audio bitrate settings. You can easily switch devices on each track and have multiple mics or desktop audio devices. You can downscale to any resolution and do pretty much any FPS. The hotkeys are extremely good. And then you can change your render and a bunch of other things to make quality and other things perform differently. Here is a demonstration of how you could record a screen. You can pick which display if you have multiple displays, which isn't something I believe you can do on the other programs. And then this is what it'll look like. For example, if I was recording a game, I would get a preview on this. And every effect or overlay would show. In my opinion, OBS Studio has the best UI and settings out of the set of programs. It has amazing streaming capabilities and the preview window as well as the effects and overlay system make it really great to use once you get used to it. The only weak point is that the program can be very confusing at first with its high amount of optional settings mixed into the UI. This brings us to the conclusion. And if I had to recommend one, I'd recommend OBS. However, Shutterplay can work very well if you just want to occasionally capture a video or do shadow recording. It's extremely easy to use. DXtory is good if you have a beefy computer and a lot of hard drive space, and Action is easy to use and a good all-around program, but OVS definitely comes out in front. DXtory and Action are also paid programs. DXtory is $40 and Action is $30, whereas OBS is free, and Shadowplay is free as long as you're a NVIDIA user. If you're not a NVIDIA user, you can't use it at all. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, please post them. Thanks for watching.